Merry Christmas RPG fans! It's that time of year again. As I'm recording this video, it is the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. As you can see, I'm getting into the spirit of things with this lovely little hat. No, it's not for Santa's elves, but it is for a certain famous elf. This is a very, very cool item that I definitely wear all the time around this time of year. It's um, a li officially licensed from Nintendo. It is a Lynx cosplay hat. It is awesome. This is the only cosplay hat I own, and I love it. I know this other is like the Prinny from Disgaea, but Prinnies don't suit me. You know, Link suits me because I love Zelda. I love Link. Now, for this Christmas, I decided that I'm not going to do anything too special. I had some plans, but I've kind of decided just to keep things simple and do my final pickups video for 2012. Now, 2012, looking back, was the year that I took a break from collecting RPGs um, hardcore. I was mainly going back, playing and collecting non-RPGs, a lot of light gun games, a lot of fighting games, a few platformers, and as a genre I don't play much shmups, so I've actually played one or two shmups, and kind of taken just a little break from RPGs, well, good news, I'm back, I will really want to get back into collecting RPGs, I've missed out on so many great games this year, and I've come across some great deals online and there's so many RPGs that I really, really want for my collection. I really want to play. So definitely in 2013, I'm back to collecting RPGs full on. Now the first game I want to show you is the one I got today. And this was really cheap. And this is a game I used to own years and years ago when I had a 360. And that game that I've reclaimed is Eternal Sonata and I got this for really cheap and this is the last JRPG that I needed to reclaim for my Xbox 360 collection. Now, speaking of the Xbox 360, getting a new Xbox 360 was on my list of things to do for 2012. Now, things haven't panned out the way I wanted to and I've kind of had to put that on the side and the main thing that I was really interested in this year more than anything and it just blew my mind it exceeded my expectations was getting a PlayStation Vita and this is easily becoming my one of my new favorite handhelds of all time I absolutely love this system in my opinion they've a, they've pretty much perfected 2D imagery on this nifty little device all the games that I've played on the Vita, all the 2D images just are perfect. They're flawless. There's nothing wrong with them. And I, I would love it if someone made just a purely 2D game on the Vita because I just think it would look absolutely outstanding. But I'm getting my head myself. Now, of course, as I said, I really wanted a 360 and I couldn't afford it. Now, my dad, who loves playing Western RPGs, pretty much played all the Western RPGs, all the dark, gothic type RPGs, because he doesn't really get into many of the Japanese RPGs, he more likes the more serious, dark, gothic, medieval ones, like he loves Dark Souls, he loves Demon Souls, he loves Elder Scrolls and, you know, Two Worlds and all those type of games and he pretty much played all those games to oblivion on the PS3 and he ran out of those games to play and uh, he keeps asking me is there any RPGs that, are, that is out that I would love and the only one I could recommend to him was The Witcher 2 and unfortunately The Witcher 2 is only on PC and Xbox 360 so we talked for so many months, and I, I said to myself, you know, just wait until I get a 360 in 2013, you know, and then be able to play it. Well, he couldn't wait that long. And he got himself a 360. Now, I, I've talked it over with him, and he's pretty cool with me playing games, because he plays games on my PS3, so it's, you know, give and take. Um, very awesome of him. I have so many games on the 360 that I would love to play. The biggest one being Tales of Vesperia. 
you know, I really want to finish that game. So this pretty much saves me to buy a 360. Do I really want one of my own? Not really. I'm not saying I hate the 360, but it's it's a system that I don't understand the appeal. I mean, it has some really nifty little exclusive JRPGs for the system, but it was definitely not JRPG orientated. Um, I mean, it does have one of the best ones, believe you me, Lost Odyssey. That's still the best Japanese RPG of this gen of the HD generation. It's just amazing, and it's worth owning a 360 for that. But I have to look at things realistically. My budget, you know, is too tight for me to spend it all on, you know, all these consoles that I want. So if I can knock one down just by, you know, playing my dad's, then that's a big um, help to me, honestly. So I'm pretty happy just having, you know, playing his 360 in the household. And pretty much I haven't touched it yet. I'm waiting for him to finish The Witcher 2, which I can say this now from what I've seen looks absolutely phenomenal. The level of detail in that game is astounding. And I'm going to say this now. The Witcher is my favorite RPG series outside of Japan. I absolutely love the first game and I can't wait to play The Witcher 2. And just the level of detail, not just with the visuals, but with the characters, the conversation. There's so many funny lines in that game. It just It's just a wonderful looking game and I can't wait to play it. But, getting back to the pickups, the next game, I got this a while ago, and it was different than most of the other games that I collect, but this game features a big pastime, old pastime of mine when I was a teenager, and I used to play this with my friends. And of course the game is Dungeons and Dragons Tactics. Yes, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons in my early years. Shock horror. An RPG fan playing Dungeons and Dragons, I never would have thought of it. <laughs> I you know that that's a video for another day. I've got a few stories in my D&D days. Um some funny, some terrible, you know, I, I will tell them one day. I want to do a video uh, talking about role-playing outside the TV because I've played a few pen and paper RPGs and just want to reflect uh, reflect back on those days. I have not popped this in yet. I got this for dirt cheap at EB Games and I have not popped it in yet so maybe sooner or later I'll give it a go. Apparently it's a, str it's a strategy RPG you know, with D&D rules, so I'm interested to see how this plays when I have the chance. Next up is a game that was, until recently, really hard to get, but they reprinted it in Europe, and that is Trinity Universe. And I haven't popped this in yet, I have seen some scenes of the game online, there's a running gag with uh, a few friends of mine online with uh, Shintai and Forest Lock and they kept talking about this running gag and it just made me interested in playing the game. And it's, it's a crossover game, there's some characters from Gust, some characters from Nippon Ichi and I'll probably give this a go when I, I'm in the mood to play this type of game. Next up, Kun Pass This Up. I've been waiting for it to sort of come down in price and I nearly bought it at full price because this is a game my third favorite series and that is Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 and I actually really liked the first Joker's game it's a bit underrated but I think it's one of the more better monster ranching games out there I mean I've kind of given up on the Pokemon series to be perfectly honest and I think Dragon Quest Monsters for me is is the monster ranching game for me. I love Dragon Quest a bit and I wanted to play a great monster ranching game and I really like the first one. And I like the fact that it does copy Pokemon in a few aspects but at the end of the game it's it becomes a pure Dragon Quest game and I really liked it. And 
I really want to play this. I've kind of been following the trail of Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 for a long time. I didn't think we were going to get this, but very thankful for Square Enix to bring this to our shores. So I'll definitely have to give this a go when I finish Dragon Quest 6. Dragon Quest 6 is the Dragon Quest game I am playing at the moment. Well, was playing at the moment until a certain other game turned up on my doorstep. And that game which has been ruling my life every waking moment is Persona 4 The Golden. Persona 4 remains one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It is one of the best RPGs on the PS2. And I was addicted to that game. And I'm still addicted now. I was wondering how well I received this because I've already played the original version. Uh, I counted one day I played this for 12 hours. <laughs> you heard me right. 12 hours. Half a day playing this. Was it worth it? Yes. This game is just addictive. It really is. It's that great game from the PS2 with a lot of added extras. The events that they've added are so great. They're so funny. It really adds to the experience. I will definitely say they've added a lot in terms of the dungeons and everything. Not talking about the design of the monsters, the biggest thing they've changed is the Arcana cards. Whereas in the original PS2 version you had to basically, it's like roulette, you had to pick them out. They've made it way more easier that you don't have to pick them out. They just lay all the cards for you and you just pick with them face up so you know what you're getting. What makes it more easier is they've increased the variation of these cards. And there's just so many rewards in these cards, like you'll get some cards that will increase your Persona's permanent stats. You know, there's, there's Persona level up cards, uh, more chess key cards. Getting chess keys in the original version was a trial. It was, it was bullshit. But they've rectified that in the Golden. It's much more easier to get chess keys. It's never a problem. And that's where the game becomes, I would definitely say, it's much more easier than the original version. You do have the option to set the difficulty, you know, from very easy to very hard, but I'm playing it on normal, and I didn't have this much trouble playing the PS2 version. It's, it's, it's easier. I can understand why Atlas chose to make this game easier, because they want to market it to a new crowd that is... You know, probably coming into gaming for the first time with the PlayStation Vita. And this is probably one of the first major RPGs to be on the system. And i got to thank Atlas for, you know, pushing their team to release this within the first year of the Vita's life. It's such an outstanding, um, you know, outstanding performance on their end. You know, really, really, really good. With the new voice actors... I didn't have a problem. I Chi Chie stood out to me. They've changed Chie's uh, voice actress, and she took some getting used to, but she did. She does a good job. I really like the replacement that they got for Teddy. He does a ph phenomenal job too. You know, everyone else they got back from the original. But yeah, guys, I could rant about this game and. You know, even as I do this video, I want to get off the video and just play this some more because I'm just enjoying it so much. Next game, I've been waiting for this to come down to a very reasonable price, and it did, and that is White Knight Chronicles 2. Now, the tricky thing is, is this is the American version. My copy of White Knight Chronicles 1 is European. Now... When I found out that the first game was going to be available on White Knight Chronicles 2, I stopped playing White Knight Chronicles 1. And I'm glad I did, because if I would have finished White Knight Chronicles 1 and got this, I would have been shit out of luck, because my save file wouldn't have worked. So I'm glad I did it. So one day I've got to take the time to play number 1, then get straight to number 2. I've been waiting to get this for a while now. But I still like the fact I own the first game I've got. One and two for the collection. And yeah, I, I thought this was great. I think I got it for a third of the price. It was well worth it. Next game, I found this on the cheap too. 
And this is this game is very surprising. And that is Trinity the Souls of Zillol. Not a lot of people like this game. Now this is made by Koei and Omega Force. These are two companies that I'm very familiar with. For all of you that don't know, I was a die-hard Dynasty Warriors fan a long time ago. I still love the series. I don't think I have the same love. I've kind of regained that love uh, last year when I played Dynasty Warriors 7 and uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3, which is just... You know, if you're a Dynasty Warriors fan and you're a Gundam fan like myself, that is like the holy grail right there. And that kind of regained my love for Koei. Um, so I basically went around trying to find some new Koei games and I've known about this for a while now because the Souls of Zillol is their main RPG series that Koei does that's not based on history. Now what makes this game stand out is the art style. The way the graphics are displayed it's not quite you know normal graphics, it's not quite cell shading, it's sort of marred in the two and it's based on old oil paintings and you may not see that at first glance but if you notice closely you'll see it that the the graphics are meant to be displayed as one big moving portrait and I really like that it makes it stand out more than the other games out there now in terms of gameplay one thing that you can expect from Omega Force is the controls are simple and you can basically if you play one Omega Force Koei game you can play them all because they have similar controls not so much for Trinity Souls of Zillol but say it requires the same repetitiveness and that's the thing you'll notice with Koei games is they're very repetitive but they're very fun in their repetition now the thing about Trinity Souls of Zillol is you will be doing the same sort of quest more than once to gain experience, to gain money, you know, and you'll you you'll you'll pro you'll progress the story at a very slow pace, but it's well worth it. And before I was playing all these other grand RPGs, I was putting in a few hours, and I personally liked it. I like the characters. I like the setting. I like you know predicting what might may happen you know, at the end of the game, and I think I'll definitely go and finish this. It's definitely at the top of my list. I think it doesn't deserve the flack it gets. I seriously think it's a great little action RPG, and, you know, if, it, if you find it really cheap, I think it's worth getting it, to be honest. It, it's a great little game. Now, this is a game I bought for my dad, but he's done with it and I'm going to add it into my collection. I have no idea when I'm going to have time to play this game and that is Two Worlds 2. There's a bit of controversy behind this game and the game looks great but the developers, Topware Interactive, I heard some things about them that are a bit iffy but I'm, I'm going to give this a go nevertheless. I really want to get into some more Western RPGs, not too many of them. I mean, a lot of people should say I should really try to play Skyrim. My dad actually owns Skyrim, but, you know, I, I'm not in that mindset yet to play an Elder Scrolls game. I mean, I did play Mor Morrowind back in the day on the Xbox, and, you know, I only played that for, like, 20 hours, and then I put it down because I wanted to play something on my PS2. So, but I'll definitely, you know, at least give this a try just for curiosity's sake, you know, later on. <laughs> Alright, and for the second last item, now, there are two things that I've wanted for a while. One is Monster Hunter 3 Try, the other, uh, Classic Controller Pro. Now, the game for Monster Hunter 3 just by itself was going for about $70, and the Classic Controller Pro would go for about, you know, $30, $40 by itself. Well, I went to my local EV and got the Monster Hunter 3 Tri Classic Controller Pro Pack and this was just $35 and I think for that price it was an absolute steal you know I've wanted to play Tri ever since I played a demo at uh, Supernova which is my main 
uh, pop culture expo, my big convention every year, and I really liked it. I mean, it, it you know, it's nothing new to me. I mean, I've played a lot of fancy stuff online, and I like it when people say Monster Hunter 3, you know, Monster Hunter in general is revolutionary, but it's not. It's just, it's based on the gameplay mechanics of Fantasy Star Online, but it's got its own aesthetic with, you know, the sort of like the really ancient times where you've got the caveman-esque tribal people fight dinosaur, basically giant dinosaur-esque creatures. And there is a lot of charm to be played in Monster Hunter. It's one of those games that does not hold my attention too long, like I might play this for five hours a week maybe, but I can't sort of get into it as much as like I'd play Persona 4, you know, like I'd, I'd lose, you know, any connection to the outside world when I play Persona 4, but, you know, with this it's, it's good fun for like an hour or two of a day and yeah, I'm very glad to have it. It's a really nice box. One thing I am very pissed off about is they've put some sticky tape around here where the price is. I cannot rip that off because if I rip it off it will actually rip the print off the box and I just I want to say to you know electronic stores and all this don't put these you know high end sticky tape on your boxes because it will tear boxes apart and it's a real pain in the ass like instead of pulling it off I had to basically just get a pen and scribble out the price you know so it doesn't stand out you know it, it's bull crap but it's better than nothing and now the final game of 2012. I basically gave everyone a hint in my last video where I wished the Suicoden series a happy 17th birthday. And one thing that really shocked me this year is I didn't have the time or money to get this until now. And that is Gensel Suicoden. Centennial Tapestry for the PSP. This was the latest game to come out in the Suicone series. Of course, all the Suicone fans know that this is not a part of the main Suicone franchise. Like Tear Crease, this is set in the Affinity and it's its own story. And from what I've played of it, I have mixed opinions. And I'm being honest. As much as I'm a Suicone fan, I have to be honest. The characters are very interesting. I really like them. The music is phenomenal. It's a Suicone game. It doesn't matter if it's Tear Crease, if it's Five or whatever. The music is still really good. I absolutely love the soundtrack to this game. Gameplay is where I have a few issues with. Number one, the town system is atrocious. I mean... There's, what's wrong with just having a character walk around a town? It's awesome. And if you want to cut down the time, then just have a quick travel bar where, you know, you choose where you want to go. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, as much as I don't really like that, I can understand that. The system they use is very obscure. Basically, you have a bird's eye view of the town and you have... You don't even have a cursor on the screen, you've got little, like, little invisible crosshairs. And you have to basically focus the camera on a structure that you want to visit and when that structure glows you can go in and have a chat. I think that that is terrible. It's a terrible idea. I would rather just have a menu and you can click where to go but that is really bad. Uh, it's not cutting corners, it's just making the game I don't know, more tricky than it needs to be. Uh, I, I really don't like it. It's I think there was a, there's been an RPG in the past that sort of has that same sort of system, but in, in my opinion, it's not good at all. I wish they would, wouldn't do that. Hopefully, you know, another game. See, the thing about Silly Coden is going to these towns, talking to the people, soaking in the atmosphere was a great part of the game. And I, you know, I, I didn't feel it. I mean... Granted, I've only played three hours of the game, so it's a bit harsh for me to say this already. But in the first town, I thought it was it was terrible. It you know, it was shocking. But um, you do get to walk around with the character in the areas. Like you will have a world map that's set up like uh, a game board. 
you know, kind of like the same sort of system that they would have used in Suicone 3 apparently, and Sui more so Suicone Tear Crease. Um, probably to a lesser effect, but, you know, that's the way it's going. Which, of course, is another blow to the Suicone series, because I love the other games where you journey around the world. Not so much in 4, because it was so long-winded, but, you know, I don't really have a problem with the world map in Sentinel Tapestry. Now, when you go into an area, you do have your character model and you do move about in 3D, and I do love the character models, they look really cool. Um, the environments are, they can be a bit simplistic at times, it's not really too much detail, but well enough for a PSP game. Now, the battle system is where the game sort of takes another hit. It's got something missing to make it that Suicoden quality. They've inserted like a battle gauge for each character where they can perform a certain move if they've got enough battle points in their gauge. So think along the lines of Skies of Arcadia if they have their own individual bars. That's not so much the problem. What the problem is is Suicoden is known for its magic. The true runes and the runes in general is not only a part of the gameplay, it's a part of the story, it's a part of the world of Suicoden. And with Tear Crease, they had, you know, the tomes, and they worked into the story as well, so that was pretty good. Now, from what I've seen of the magician character, in order to cast magic, she, ne she needs orbs. And how do you, pro you know, I thought, oh, does she recover these orbs? No, you need to buy them. Yep. In order to cast magic, you need to go to the item shop, and you need to buy these magic orbs in order to, for her to use that ability. And it does shit all damage. So, and it, it, it's not just the magic that bothers me. I mean, this is very early in the game. I'm guessing there's more wondrous skills and techniques that is, you know, introduced later in the game. So, again, it's me being harsh, but, you know, I've played Sui Game games within the first hours. There's just something extraordinary about the games. And I'm not feeling that with Centennial Tapestry. Um, one thing I just want to add about the battle system before I finish up. It, it feels lifeless. It really does. The character animation, it does, it does its job, but it doesn't wow anyone. You know, it doesn't wow me at all. And I, I have this feeling that they pumped this game out, like, very quickly. And I don't know, you know, it, like I said, it's early days to say, there's so much to like about the game, there's so much, but in terms of being one of the biggest Suicone fans on the planet, there's just some things that, you know, I wish they did a little bit better, you know, just to bring it closer to, you know, what makes a Suicone game in terms of quality. Now, I can definitely say, without a doubt, this game will probably never, ever come out in English. And there's a few reasons I can see why. Um, the game, like Tear Crease, has a shit ton of voice acting, which isn't a problem. But if it's anything like the voice cast of Tear Crease, then we have a big friggin' problem. I mean, it's, it's not their fault. I mean, they were under, you know, direction of Konami to basically speed up their line so they can basically put it into the DS card, because apparently when they translate the script into English for Tear Crease, it basically overloaded the DS card. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be an issue for a game on a UMD, but, you know, the, the problem with Suicone is, is Tear Crease actually left a bit of taste in a lot of people's mouths. I said that Tear Crease is probably the worst Suicone game but it's actually one of my favorite DS games. So the worst Suicoden game can still be one of the best RPGs out there. And for Tear Crease, it was justified. It is probably, I would definitely say in my top five DS games of all time, it's such a great RPG, but it just lacks so much that made the previous Suicoden games great. And I've got a feeling it's gonna be the same here for Centennial Tapestry. I've, I've actually read the ideas that had the game that there is time travel, very cool, can't wait to see it. Now, you know, I've, like I said, I've been incredibly harsh for something I've only played the first two to three hours, and I'm hoping that I play a little bit more of this and I can eat my own words and say it's a fantastic game and it's worth, you know, the Suicone fans banding together and giving this a uh, fan translation. But, regardless, 
Suicone is my favorite series. Anything Suicone related, I want on my shelf, you know. If they had Suicone toilet paper, I would definitely buy that. I like to wipe my ass for 108 stars. <laughs> Which, which is so wrong, it's so disrespectful, but, you know, that that's the lengths that I would go to, you know. And I've been meaning to buy more stuff in my Suicone collection, you know, more soundtracks, because there's so many soundtracks for the Suicone series. There's a lot of art books and strategy guides that I really want for the series. There's a lot of reprints. Now, I've got a lot of copies of Suicone 1. I'm still searching for the obscure PC version. I heard the PC version isn't as good because it uses, you know, window, all those windows to display the game and it doesn't look good at all, but it's such an obscure version of the game. I have not seen it on eBay, but to be honest, I haven't seen it I haven't searched for it on eBay lately, so I probably should, after this video, give it another chance and see if I can find the PC version of Suicone 1. Ooh, one more game I've got to quickly mention, because I've completely forgotten about this before. I actually bought this back in winter and totally forgot to mention it in my winter pickups video. And that is Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. I actually really like this game. When I was finished with it, I pretty much shelved it. The last few months has been chaotic and I've completely forgotten about this game. You know, been having it in my collection, but I really enjoyed playing it. It had a lot of fantastic worlds, some of the best worlds ever in the Kingdom Hearts series. And it, it, the reason why I like it is because they went for more fantasy and sci-fi worlds, not too much of the goofy Disney worlds that I'm not too much of a fan of. But they chose some really good choices for worlds. Fantasia is fantastic. It fits the scope of Kingdom Hearts just perfectly. And I, I really enjoyed this game. I thought the gameplay at first was very disorientating, but I really enjoyed it. The worst part of the game I would have to say, and it's not a bad thing, but I haven't played The World Ends With You. And all those characters from The World Ends With You flew over my head, you know, everything, like, I can sort of understand what they were going with these characters, but there's a lot of things missing. I kind of think it's pretty cheap of them to do that, but it's the same sort of thing with King, you know, the, the older Kingdom Hearts games, like, you know, for all those newcomers that haven't played Final Fantasy, they wouldn't understand what those characters were there for, but luckily because I was, a, I'm still an at heart, you know, a quasi-big Final Fantasy fan. There's a lot of Final Fantasy games that I love to death. You know, 4 to 10 are my Final Fantasy games that I love with a passion. 5, you know, probably low on the spectrum, but actually had fun with 5. You know, and I've got a great wealth of Final Fantasy knowledge, and that helped me when I went to play Kingdom Hearts. And I kind of felt like I was left out when I encountered all the World Ends With You characters. And I've got to say this now that, you know, if you've played the game, you'll have a leg up with what's going on with those characters. But for me, it really did went way over my head. And I know a lot of you in the comments are like, you need to play with The World Ends With You. Well, it's one of those games that's never truly appealed to me. And I've, I've wanted it in my collection, but I didn't think the price justified me buying the game. I, if, to be perfectly honest, I want it for dirt cheap and thinking about that makes me want to actually get the iPhone port because I know the iPhone port is reasonably cheap. I mean, of course, I'd rather the DS game for my DS collection, but I, I didn't want to spend too much money on it. It's kind of led me to this place where it's become really hard to get in my neck of the woods, but you know, maybe in the future if I'm in the mood to play it, but yeah. So you just want to quickly put that in, finally mention that I got Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance because I totally felt like a fool again for leaving it out of the last video. So there you have it. So that's it for the final pickups video of 2012. Now, one last thing I've got to say before I finish this video is the day after Christmas is a very special day indeed. For all of you that don't know, I'm a big fan of J.R.R. Tolkien. And the Lord of the Rings films are my favourite films of all time. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I've seen those movies. 
and it's it's a big thing in my family. We all love Lord of the Rings so much. Um, Boxing Day is going to be the Australian release of The Hobbit, and I have my ticket for the very first session. I am very happy, as you can see, I've been dying to watch The Hobbit for a very, very long time, and you know, seeing Peter Jackson weave his magic once more. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, guys. You know, I've been dying to see the hover come to life on the big screen. So really looking forward to that. So guys, that's it. Merry Christmas. And I will bring out one more video before the new year. So until then, take care and happy gaming.